Hi, this is Father Louis Skirty with Friends of the Word, the weekday word with a guest. Now, you see all the pictures of Blessed Mother Teresa around us, and um, Jeannie and I had the honor of meeting Mother Teresa, and she's going to give you more of the details. She has a great memory. Uh, I taught Jeannie at DePaul High School. Maybe I didn't teach her. I didn't have you in class. No. But I had her brothers mm -hmm. um, at DePaul High School centuries ago. And she'll give you all the details of when we met, how we met, and all that good stuff, because she has a great memory. Uh, Jeannie, I introduced Jeannie, Spinoza, I, I, Isaacowski used to be, and now it's Spinoza, okay, her maiden name, right? And you have how many kids? Two. Two. And while I was at this chapel, every Christmas and Easter, you would come visit us. We which did. Was, which was great, wonderful. Kids, enjoy your mess. Thank you. I kept in touch with, with Jeannie via email, via family stuff, and... <laughs> And we've um, maintained a good friendship. We do. So, Jeannie, um, tell me what you remember about that day and date and all that good stuff when we met Mother Teresa. How, how we met to go see her? Yes, yes. Do you mean when your office was above the gym? Okay. <laughs> so now we're going into detail. This is going to be a good show. Um, the, okay, I'll go into detail. I was a chaplain at DePaul High School. Uh, we had... Um, I guess a Lenten collection, and I initiated that with the seniors, and then we spread it out through, through the whole school, and we asked every student in the in the school to contribute whatever they wanted at lunchtime, so extra cash, pennies, whatever it was, would go into these little cans. They were coffee cans in those days, and we sealed them. By and the candy table. And the candy table, yeah. right, right. Not uh, to buy the candy bar, put the money in the jar. That, oh, that, <laughs> she remembers <laughs> her role there. And um, as a result of that, we were able to, the season of Lent, to collect around $5,000 for the poor. Somewhere during this season of Lent, we dis we were thinking about to whom should we give this money. And we had, in senior class theology, we had been studying Mother Teresa. One of the kids suggested her, and that's that was the beginning, and we'll talk about that uh, as we continue. Then I said, we have to bring it to her, mail it to her. So what I did, and this, is, this is a very, very embarrassing and silly, silly uh, story. Um, what I did was looked on, on the telephone books. We didn't have the online then. And we looked up uh, Sister Teresa's convents. We got one in Newark. I called her, and I said, hi, Sister. This is Father Skirt at DePaul High School. We want to send a donation to Mother Teresa. So the woman said, presumably was a sister, the woman said, um, why don't you call this number, it's a convent number, in New York, St. Anthony's in the Bronx. I said, okay. So I decided to call that number, and I say this with great uh, embarrassment, and it should teach all of us um, the role of, of prejudice in our lives, and subtle prejudice. I called up, and a woman with a heavy accent answered the phone. And I was in the school office, okay? And 3 o'clock in the school office, remember that what that was like? Chaos. Chaos. Like noise, bells, all that stuff. So I called the convent. I said, hi, sister. This is Father Skirt. Give it a little spiel. Um, we have a little donation to Mother Teresa, and we want to send it to her. So the woman said, hello, Father Skirt. Wait a minute. I said, okay. I said, she, I figure she's going to go to a telephone book and give me the address. Another woman comes on with a thicker accent. <laughs> Hello, for the security. I I know what you want. I said, good. Could, so can you give me Mother Teresa's um, phone number or uh, address? And she says, uh, no. She says, why don't you bring it? I said, sister, I said, it, it's only $5,000. To bring it to India would cost probably $5,000 <laughs> airfare. <laughs> so she says, no, for the security. You can bring it here to the Bronx and bring some students, too. And I'm saying, I, I, it's not clicking. I said, sister, why come to the Bronx? We want to just mail this. I will be here for another two weeks. Oh, my God. <laughs> exactly. I, I, that's exactly what I said. Oh, my God. So I put my hand over the phone. Those are the days we had phones in the office, with, like this, head and bottom. And I covered the mic, and I said, I'm talking to Mother Teresa. <laughs> the place went dead, dead. Everybody came around, and so I took a breath. Uh, okay, 
I says, okay, sister, I says, is this Sister Teresa? She's, uh, no, I says, is this Mother Teresa? And she says, yes, Father Scarthy, this is Sister Teresa. That was my reaction. And she was very calm. Yeah, very yeah, quiet. yeah. Well, she didn't know me, so she was calm. <laughs> she knew me. She'd be hysterical. So then uh, we, we worked out the brief details. We got a date the next Saturday. Um, and she says, bring some students. So I, you know, I figured, let me be gentle. Uh, how many students? She says, two, three from each class, because she knew it was high school. So I said, we're set. And I went to the principal. And I said, listen. We've got this great opportunity. We're going to bring two freshmen, two sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And um, I said, we can bring a, a parent from each class. So we had a van. I had uh, 20 people in the athletic vans. And tell, tell our audience how I chose you. <laughs> Father Skirty had his office, our gym. At the top of the gym, there was a separate way in. So it was almost like a balcony right. of seats. And along the wall were a couple offices, and that's where your office was. And he would come out from time to time, poke his head out the office, look down, see what's going on in the gym. Everyone's under control. He sees me in gym class. And he puts his head over the railings like, Jeannie, Isaacowski, come see me when you're done. I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do? <laughs> I'm like, what could I have possibly done? So after gym, I went up to see you, and... That's where I got my invitation to go yeah. see and Mother Teresa. I it, was the baby. Yes, you were the you were the freshman. There were two freshmen. I don't remember the other person's name. I don't remember name. who it was either. But but there were two. Now tell the audience what year that was. Nineteen seventy eight. So you were. I was fourteen. Fourteen years old. God 14. bless you. How so old, you could, how you old could, were you? Thirty three. <laughs> just as just as I am now. Thirty three. Just like Jesus. I stopped counting at thirty three. So, okay, so um, the day comes, and um, what was really interesting is uh, Sister uh, Pat, Sister Patricia Flowers, she was the principal, uh, she said, I, can't, I said, could you go with me? She says, no, I can't go, that's Sally, whatever she had. She says, but my mother can go in my place. Now, Mrs. Flaherty, the, the mother, had to be in her 80s. I was thrilled, thrilled with that, because she was a wonderful, wonderful lady. So uh, I asked her. She said yes. So that Saturday came, and we all and Father, um, the Irish guy, McLaughlin, Father McLaughlin, drove the van because uh, I was so excited I, I couldn't see straight. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to the Bronx. Remember that experience? What was that like for you? The Bronx. Well, you're watching all that scenery, people hanging on the streets, right? Seeing the bus come through, yeah. comments being made. I think the one thing was, I remember the building being white, mm -hmm. and I graffiti on it, yeah. and going into a gated yes. bobbed wire, Yes, yes. I was like, oh my God, what are we going into? And that was the convent of St. Anthony's Parish. St. Anthony's, Parish. and then the bus, the bus or van pulled in, and I don't remember who got out. Was it you? You that went to the door? Probably. Somebody went to the door, and I remember a big wooden door. Right, 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 right. And they answered the door, but the door was only cracked. Yes, yes, they yes. They wouldn't even open. And the some door of these the pictures here are from that day. So as Jeannie's talking, you can get a fuller picture. Um, I think we're going to do this in two segments this show, but let, let's get into the door okay. first. So they cracked the door. You guys had words, and then the door shut. And now we're all sitting there on the bus, like, "What's going on?" We're thinking we're getting ready to go in. We're going to get off the bus, and we're waiting, waiting, waiting. And then the door opened. We were escorted into a conference room, which is in one of these pictures. Right. That the table right. she's sitting at. A long table. A long um, and and she it was off to the left. And she, well, she wasn't even in the room when right, we got there. Right, we right. had to wait for her. It was actually like felt like you were waiting for the president of the United States. To better walk yet, in. honey. Better <laughs> yet. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I yeah. mean. For a perspective of a 14-year-old not knowing yeah, what to expect. that's fascinating. I never really got into your head about that. Go well, ahead, Because tell. you never know how. Everyone takes different things different ways. They look at things differently. Like, I, I look back at the experience now, and I it's one of the biggest highlights of my life, I would think, next to having my children. That's great. But And then you look at things differently. You look at, you know, what you learned from it, what she said, how it comes into play, what you hear in the media, what right. she really did do. Very, very quiet. I mean, I remember her walking in. Tiny. And very tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. tiny, tiny. tiny. 
if she was five foot. I right. don't even know if she right. was. Um, she was 68 years old when we met her. Mm. She, so she was born in 1910. Um, Somebody did their homework. <laughs> yeah. I remember when she walked in, and correct me if I'm wrong, there was either one or two males that seemed like security almost for her. I, I don't remember. I don't remember that. You don't remember no, that? No. I did. I was so focused on her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But if Jesus came in the room, I would have noticed Jesus, but nobody else. <laughs> no, they came, like, I guess, until everything, and then they left. Right, right, right. But I remember that. I, I remember that. That's that I do remember. And and she sat at the head of she this at the head long of the table. table, and you were on one side. I was, no, I was I was on the side, the opposite, the same side you were on, but further to the end. Okay. The opposite end. And I was on her left. You were on her left. So and I was on the left side at the end. And we brought a friend of mine, Rosalie, uh, who took pictures. Mm -hmm. And that's that black and white picture back there has been blown up by uh, students at William Patterson. When they heard I was going to William Patterson, and they just did a little research, and they knew that I had met Mother Teresa. That was the front page of the the front front page article of the Beacon, the school wow. the school paper, and it was um, and then the secretary Callie said, "I have to blow this up because it's so," and she blew it up, and it's it's turning brown because it was so old, but but it was a great experience going there. Okay, so we're in the room with Mother Teresa, um, and if you want to know more, you're gonna have to tune into the next show, which is Meeting Mother Teresa Part Two. This has been Father Louis Scurdy with Jeannie. Spinoza, Isaacowski, and all the memories that we had of meeting Mother Teresa, Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta. God bless you, and let me hear from you. Father Lou Skirty at Hotmail.com. God bless you.